And over the last, oh, six months with OpenStack, we're very new to this. So that's what we want to share today. What we know so far, what we're still learning, how we want to shape this, how we want the help shaping this, right? So where are we now? Um, we actually just in the last three months um, participated in the GNOME Outreach Program for Women. It's um, very much like the Google Summer of Code program where they invite open source projects to submit ideas and bring mentors. Then they pair them up with students. And the unique thing about the outreach program for women is that they are going to pair women with hopefully female mentors. It doesn't have to be, but it's really awesome, right? So it's part of that inclusion, part of getting women excited about open source, part of helping people understand you too can be part of our community and it's your community too. We also want to work in the Google Summer of Code like process, but what's happened is our release cycles haven't really matched up well. But I've been talking to lots of people this week who want to make that a goal for 2014. And there's also companies that have people working as interns. Um, one is up here on stage today. He's been doing two interns with two different companies. I also talked to Lou Tucker this morning at breakfast with the board, and he is getting um, Cisco interns to work on OpenStack projects as well. So this is a big ecosystem that we can start to shape and build and see what we want to get. But I want to dive deep into the details for the GNOME Outreach Program for Women. So who can apply? This addresses women directly. It invites them specifically. It tries to get on mailing lists where we know developer women hang out. It tries to get groups of women collaborating with each other, right? The other thing I love about this program is the participants had to put in a commit as part of their application. So you know how OpenStack is very interested in active technical contributors. We count them, we analyze them, we make fancy graphs. <laughs> well, I love that this program actually helps them feel welcome and they can even start before they, they can start looking at different open source projects, seeing how their patch gets in, seeing how hard it is to patch, how easy it is to patch, what's interesting about a patch. Um, we also were really excited that they are connecting women one-on-one -on -one with mentors. They've been doing this since about 2005, 2006. So I feel like this is the kind of experience we can learn from, what works well specifically for women. And then also, for the outreach program for women, they know that not all women are coders and some just want a little, interest, little interesting project to work on. So how can we involve non-coders and get them a project like documentation, of course, that's exciting to me. Um, how can we get them involved in maybe marketing? How can we get them involved in community outreach for OpenStack? And this really appeals to this group. Um, this also allows not just college students. And to me, when I saw that, I was like, that is a really interesting idea. I have mom friends who I would love to get working on OpenStack. <laughs> this would actually enable it if they could find the way to get involved in the program, right? And it also has a component where all of them are required to blog about the, sta the status, the process, how they're doing um, every two weeks. And um, I don't know if you guys saw, but one of our interns' um, blog posts was retweeted by like the CEO of Rackspace. Like this is important because they were communicating their experience with Rackspace with OpenStack, and it showed like everyone has to start somewhere with OpenStack, and she could show us how she got started with OpenStack. I thought that was awesome. Um, this is the part, the manageable tasks are actually really difficult to find, and we're gonna talk about that a little more. How can we make sure that the tasks are enough that they can do in a, in a three month period, in a two month period? Um, and then we also have set up an IRC channel for the interns and the mentors. That was actually a lot of fun. I thought this last three months was like hanging out online. It's totally fun. And then um, the other awesome part is that they encourage you to bring people to in-person meetings. The OpenStack Foundation funded three interns to come to the summit so that we could meet in person. They could be involved in our development process. This is awesome. Thank you, Foundation, right? But what do we still, so that's kind of a, I wanted to do kind of a, show you what one program is like, how it worked. But I also want to talk about what we need, right? So. The most important thing right now is we need more mentors in OpenStack. Everyone in OpenStack is super busy, but mentorship takes about 10 hours a week and you have to be the type of person who can answer the new questions and answer the IRC queries, like how do I do this, I'm stuck, get people unstuck, right? Um, you also have to find really interesting projects. Now, I already explained that Outreach Program for Women enables like not just coding projects, 
Um, and then the Google Summer of Code is like, you cannot give us a list of bugs and expect interns to work on this. So there's different programs have different ideas for what people should be working on. Bring me all of your ideas and we'll collect them together, right? Um, Foundation has been outstanding for funding. Um, Rackspace and Red Hat funded the last round of OPW interns. Um, we want to keep that funding going, keep that um, encouragement from, monetarily, sure, you know, let's invest in this. And then um, we all want to make sure that we have built a real relationship with the interns and that they feel part of the community, that it's their community too. How can we make sure we stick with these interns? You know, offer them jobs, offer them more opportunities to learn. Um, we're, we have one person up here who did an intern as a bachelor degree and, and now he's doing an internship as a master's degree. That's awesome, right? And then lastly, but the most important thing is we need interns. So get with your college professors, reach out to your alumni groups, find people who are interested in, in interning and learning about OpenStack. All right, so that was my introduction. I went a little long, but we're going to try to keep it on track. Um, next, we're going to go to the panel discussion portion. So. These are our interns, our lovely interns, Laura Alves, Emmy and Maki, and Vicky Martinez, famous for OpenStack 101, I must say. And then our mentors, I served as a mentor for the documentation with Laura. And then we have Julie Pichon. Hello. She is a dashboard Horizon developer, and she worked with Vicky. And then we have Icha Sethi. She works at Rackspace, and she's core on Glance, the image service. And she worked with Anita, whose back is hurting, so she's sitting over here. <laughs> so now I'm going to hand it over to Julie to go through our questions we came up with. Okay. Okay, so many thanks to Anne, who in addition to being a mentor was also coordinating uh, the different internship projects. So thanks for making this happen. <laughs> and um, we have a few prepared questions, and then we would love to hear what are your thoughts and questions about this kind of programs. First, I would like to ask Victoria about her thought on how we can welcome um, newcomers like intern better into OpenStack, and I know you have a lot of ideas about this. Uh, well, thanks. Um, as a newcomer of myself and as creator of OpenStack 101 uh, and a space for, for new people uh, getting started with OpenStack code, I think that the, the most important thing is that newcomers get uh, emotional support. I think that w that was one of the things that changed uh, everything for me when I, I started coding for OpenStack. Uh, I, I really felt comfortable having that a lot of developers willing to help me, uh, to give me ideas and to to cheer me up when when something uh, goes bad or 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 was frustrating for me. Uh, so that's uh, one of the most important things. Also, uh, when, when talking to, to a newcomer, uh, you have to forget everything you know about everything. You, you need to, to learn how to, to express your ideas in terms that a newcomer will, will understand. And finally, uh, I also think uh, that you have to, to uh, help the newcomer learn to learn the stuff. You, you don't want to give a newcomer uh, everything done for him. You want to give the tools uh, so he can uh, uh, learn by himself. So to sum up, support, uh, give, uh, treat with him as, as you don't know anything and uh, give him the tools to do things by himself. Thanks. Many thanks. Um, so the next question is for the mentors. And um, Icha, how would you describe the time commitment for, for a mentor in the project? So the time commitment of a mentor differs during different periods of the internship. So when the, it can differ from like the minimum of two hours a week to a maximum of 10 hours a week, like Anne said. So during different phases of the internship, the intern goes through different things. For example, when they're just starting off with the internship, they're getting introduced to the whole community, the process, the project. So the time commitment of an intern goes to a maximum of at least 10 hours during the first week. And during different phases of the internship, when the intern is going through a task change, when they're moving and changing and moving on to the next task, they need an introduction to the ne next task. And so some more time is needed at that phase. But during the course of the internship, it's pretty much self-sufficient. 
So the most important factor is building support, like Vicky mentioned, that if we build a, you know, a network of mentors, not only you, other developers on OpenStack to help and support the interns, they, you, they're not reliant upon you, so they have other people available to help them at any point of time. To give you an example of how Anita and I worked as a mentor and intern, so we would do the agile methodology. We would do everyday stand-ups, like every morning on IRC, she would type and she would tell me what she did the previous day, what she's going to work on today, and if she has any blockers. And these blockers not necessarily have to be resolved by me. Anyone in the OpenStack community can resolve them for her, and I can be the bridge to introduce her to that person. And apart from that, once in a while we would do Google Hangouts as necessary so that she could get more face time with me and my more one-on-one -on -one attention. Okay. Thank you, Richard. So, um, Emilia, you had a bit of a different internship experience than the other on the panel. What would you describe as being the ideal lens for an internship? <coughs> so, um, for the, uh, actually there is no ideal lens for internship. Um, I, I made both small and big internship. The first one was only three months um, at Stack Ops in Spain, and it, it was uh, really too short to, um, to 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 be involved in a in a um, huge project like a, a concrete project in the company. Uh, the time, like Vicky said, the time to be introduced in the community to 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 learn how to learn OpenStack stuff. Uh, it's maybe two months, and the time to to define what can I do for uh, now for making new OpenStack uh, things for the company and also for the community. It's maybe one or two months, so that's why um, I think um, the most important thing that is to to define the project before starting the internship, and uh, also uh, maybe to define the lens of uh, internship. It's depending also of the schools. Uh, my old school was a um, university uh, uh, which allowed me to to make a three months internship only, and now I am in master degree and I can work in part time. Um, so I'm working three days a week in my company during two years. So it's better for me since I'm I can be involved in 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 the developer teams, like uh, not like an intern but uh, like a, like a regular worker. Uh, so that's that's fine for me. So if I have to say a, a good length, I think it at least six months is it's good to be to be involved in the community and. Maybe after to continue uh, to continue in the company. Thank you. Um, now a question for the coordinator of the project: If I have ideas for an internship, how can I let the community know about them? Yeah, so um, I'm glad to say that I want to be kind of a lightning rod for these ideas. I want to kind of be able to have a place where we can all kind of think about the ideas. So what we did for Google Summer Code application process was started an ideas page on the wiki. And so what I think we should do is kind of expand on that so that any professor could come to our wiki, look for ideas pages for projects that you consider to be kind of able for an intern to do. Now, what's interesting is um, we've also got ideas for like Summer of Cloud, which would be like maybe even high school students. So let's get those ideas on the wiki as well. Um, one of the ideas was using Heat, a Heat's API to do an orchestration of a Minecraft server that your friends can play on, right? These are ideas that we need to just bring in and everybody can like look to match either an intern to the idea or a mentor to the idea or both. Now, when you bring an idea, ideally you'll also be um, knowledgeable enough that you could offer a mentor to help with that project, right? Because I think people have great ideas, but we really need both ideas and mentors. So let's you know, kind of keep that together. And I actually have an idea that we could do internships where people start out with bug fixing, then they write QA tests, then they do actual blueprints. And so it would be the same person over different periods of time, right? Um, that's worked at companies I've worked at before in the past is this um, process that's over years. Um, so how can we start to get that mature in our internship programs? So let's bring ideas to the wiki. Thank you, Anne. Yep. And finally, um, what happens to the intern after the internship? What are your plans? Do you plan on reco be, um, remaining an active contributor or is there another path? Um, Laura? Well, I think 
That's actually up to every um, intern. My goal for this internship was to learn how to be an active, free, and open source software contributor, and also to remain one. Um, OpenStack community is very welcoming, and like Vicky said, that's actually very necessary at some point because we all know OpenStack can be overwhelming at first, especially for a newcomer. Um, and I think this uh, this uh, supporting network really works also as an engagement process. So even when this internship is over, we still have ideas and things we'd like to work on and carry on the next month. And our, even our, our presence here is, is actually a proof that OpenStack is, is really interested in have a, having us as um, long-term contributors. And um, even if we are maybe uh, independent contributors or working full uh, or part-time like we, we four are doing, um, I think we'll all stay around and we'll be certainly involved with the OpenStack releases and projects for a, a long time. So we'll meet around. Okay, thank you. Uh, no Q&As open to everyone. Do you have any question or input or ideas? We would love to hear ideas. <laughs> or we could find more questions or same. Oh, please. Do you have that mic on? Do you want to just step up? Thank you. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is it's a, we're trying to find the best programs in open source, and then OpenStack goes to them. But what we could start working towards, and I see stuff is in t madly taking notes, right? Do we need to have some sort of centralized application process? Um, I don't think so yet, but the jobs board at OpenStack does have intern uh, listings as well. That's probably your company, right? You know, events has one now. So the application process might vary by program or company. Okay. Yeah. I uh, have the experience that um, this is uh, from the presentation and experience sharing. I can see that this is more or less like um, a relationship between a mentee and a mentor. Yep. And uh, in the past, for instance, I was engaged in a mentoring uh, program organized by AUSAID, the Australian AIDS. Okay. And Interesting, yeah. okay. Uh, someone that <laughs> he or she happens to know or maybe introduced that can ah, help them interesting. With, with the project or with the tasks or with the skills that she or he is trying to acquire. So maybe that this is... Um, that is a good turn of... And so another thing I've noticed is that Google Summer of Code is asking students to bring project ideas to the project. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll enable both ways. Um, I'm reading Susan Sandberg's book, Lean In. One of the chapters is called, Are You My Mentor? And it's a play on um, this book, Are You My Mother? So it's, I see a little bit of a trap there for women especially, having a hard time approaching someone in the community. Um, and women have historically been told, unless you get a mentor, you're not getting anywhere. And in fact, it's, that's really tough. As a woman, I would not go up to Vish and ask him to be my mentor. No. Women. Oh, goodness, no, right? That would be out of the norm. So anyway, let's, I really want to play on that, though, because I think there could be um, unsung mentor possibilities that community members could flesh out. I'm not fleshing them out, obviously, so. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I look at stuff like, you're doing this too, right? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. So I, I'm getting waves from the back that we do want to try to keep on time. Is that right? Do we have five or? Okay. One more question. Two more questions. 
I did not plant a question. Yes, okay. Good. How to work with a, a community in which you have a high skills guys and trying to be um, try to be uh, like another contributor. When when you make a patch. You don't have to be like an intern. You have to be like a, another contributor. Even if this guy is working since two years or on OpenStack, we don't care. So you need to, it's very difficult, but that's my best experience to 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 learn how to, to work in the community. Um, one of the things that, that I learned uh, is that when working with a group this size, one of the most important things that I have to do first is figure out where the code goes. I did, uh, I, I spent quite a bit of time, um, I, w I would push up a patch that was just a placeholder, just sort of like, if this is the right place, here's what I intend to do. So some of my initial feedback in my reviews was, yes, this is the right place, or this actually should go over in this project or this file. And then I would start building that out. Um, so place, and the other thing is, is that to push small patches frequently, because rather than a thumbs up, thumbs down, a better approach is to have a conversation. It's just so like, here's the seed of what eventually is gonna go here, and how do we, with the reviewers, work on actually building out this patch so that it works for everybody who's got an investment in this particular functionality and make sure that when it's merged, it, it meets everybody's requirements. One more question? Yes. Um, you mentioned that you need a lot of time earlier than measures. Yes. That is what I'm finding is interns will approach us before we are organized enough to. Every, I mean, OpenStack's very popular. OpenStack's very interesting, especially for computer science people. And yeah. I kind of have an opinion on that. Is that yeah. uh, a lot of OpenStack, uh, what's visible from uh, the non-developer perspective, mm -hmm. it seems to be a whole lot of uh, talk about infrastructure. And then I think it's a it's the effect of the way it has been marketed as. It seems a whole lot of complicated systems put together, a um, whole lot of hard hacks put together. Yeah. Um, on a day to day basis without having to worry about anything else. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, some effort should be put together as to uh, reaching out on proper, proper social media where we can say, oh, this is not as complicated as it looks. And then let us help you chunk it down. Let us help, yeah. Let us e help you eat the elephant a bite at a time. Yeah. No, it's an elephant. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to organize the ideas page too. Like, yeah, yeah, small, medium, large t-shirt sizes, sure, yeah, yeah. Like we have the bodies type with low hanging fruit. Yep, yep. Awesome, all right, thanks you guys. We appreciate it and thank all of you for participating. Thank you all. Yeah.